Now in this week's video, I want to show you the complete installation of the Trick LED afterburner lights that I purchased for my Can-Am Spider F3. Now these afterburner lights go on the two bars that go around where your back fender is on your motorcycle, and they do help increase the visibility of the back of your bike. Now these were fairly easy to install. The only complications that I had were trying to uh, stuff the wires into the back of the fender because uh, there's not a whole lot of room, so I had a little bit of trouble with that. But other than that, it was a super easy install. Alright, so first you want to remove your uh, license plate cover, and then you're going to take a T15 torque wrench, and you're going to remove this little screw right here. That will give you access to this panel. Next you're going to take an 8mm or a 5 sixteenths um, Allen wrench, and loosen up these two bolts. Now it's best to have a box where you can rest your back fender underneath your license plate on when removing these two bolts here to the side. And when loosening the bottom one, we're just going to loosen it up enough to where we can handle it. Loosen it. Now we're going to make sure we hold on to the back here. Make sure you hold on to the back here and then loosen this up with your hand. Now we're carefully going to swing this around. And you do have to leave it connected because of these uh, attachments right here in the cables that go to your brake. And we're just going to scoot everything around. Set this down on a towel. Now once you have the fender turned to the right hand side, the muffler side, lay it down on the cloth, make sure nothing scratches. You're going to be removing these seven screws right here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're eight millimeters. Now what I'm gonna do next is I am going to swing this arm back around. I'm holding on to this black plastic part back here. I'm going to install one screw on the arms on one side and putting it in just enough to where it holds the bar up. Then I'll place one bolt in on this side as well. And then just gently pull this down. And that way it exposes everything. Now I'm going to take the alcohol pads that came with the kit. I'm going to clean off this entire bar, top and bottom one, making sure to get every area. After doing so, make sure that you let that dry for a few minutes. Let's go back through and wipe everything, cleaning the bar so that it's not on. And while you're letting that dry, clean the other side as well. Now inside of the pack also came a little primer. Uh, it is in adhesive promoter, so that's nice for them to do. And we're going to rub that on this bar, top and bottom. Now normally I suggest that you wear gloves while doing this, just because these are chemicals that you're using. But I wanted to make sure that I use my hands so you get to see because I didn't want a black glove on black material. But right after this, I'm going to make sure that I wash my hands thoroughly to get this chemical off of it. All right, so once you have the primer on, and you'll smell it almost has like a gasoline or a kerosene type smell to it. Nothing's wrong with it. It just helps promote that stickiness of the 3M. There are two different types of lights. There's a long one and then a short one. Make sure that you put the long one on top and the short one on the bottom.
and I start at the bead. There's a little bead right back here, a weld bead. I'm going to start after it so it goes back. And again, I'm using the long one first, so I'm going to set it up just a little bit to check it first, make sure it goes around, and it does. So I remove the red backing off of it. And remove just a little bit to get you started. We're going to try our best to do this alignment center here. Alright, so as I'm going through, I'm making sure that it's lined up in the center. It's best to do small sections at a time, and I'm pressing it down to make sure it sticks good to that bar. And 3M is usually a really good product, so you don't have to worry too much about it sticking. Now I'm going all the way around to the back side. Make sure I press everything down. Do the same for the small one. So starting from the weld, I'm trying to eyeball the center of it. Now again, I'm gonna wipe everything down with the primer. And again, hopefully you'll be able to see it in the video. There are two different sizes right here. So if I place them end to end, you can see this one is a longer one, so I'm going to put this one on top. I'm going to start this end where the weld is, and that way the cables go to the center back here. Again, just peeling off just a little bit. And try and place it in the middle the best that I can. Alright, and now I'm going to take the small one, again the end with no cable, I'm going to put on the weld. So we peel that loose just a little bit, again I'm eyeballing it. Now this one's a little bit hard because it has the cables here, so you don't want to try and pull them too much, but you want to make sure that you get this in as straight as you can. Now at this time I'm going to take my four-way splitter and I'm going to attach all these. Now they recommend putting dielectric grease on it. I usually don't. I don't want things really greased up. But what I am going to do is take a piece of electrical tape and just cover these four items to waterproof them. There we go, so they're all plugged in, they snap into place. And here's the electrical tape. Just gonna do one round quick coating. No use in wrapping this 12 or 13 times. Now the final step in connection is we're gonna take that four-way splitter. We're gonna attach it to the OEM harness. It's actually the aftermarket harness. I'm just gonna put a little piece of electric tape down here. Again, to me, this just kind of waterproofs everything. You don't need to use a whole lot of tape, just enough to make sure that you clear it up there. Now, when we remove this, we expose the back here first, if you remember. We're going to unclip it and pull it loose. All right. So we're going to fish this through. All right. We're going to plug this in to the OEM harness here. And then we're going to plug the factory into the aftermarket OEM connector. Sorry, wrong way there. There we go. We're going to feed that back through. Before connecting everything up, we're going to turn the bike on and make sure that the lights work. And they are connected and everything looks good. No flickering or anything. 
Now the hardest part about this install is trying to get all these wires in here nice and neatly. So there's a little spot here I'm going to tuck these into and put the cover on. And I'm just going to have to kind of like manually force this into place here. Alright, so everything's tucked in. Have a little wire over here on the side in place. Everything looks good. So we're going to start putting it back together. So now we're going to put everything back on. Alright, so right now I just hand tightened everything on. What I want to do is I want to make sure that everything is good here in the back. So I'm going to make sure I push everything in, make sure it seats properly. So I'm going to attempt to put this plate on to make sure everything fits. So I'm just going to go ahead and install the screw. So now I'm just going to screw the bolts back on. I don't think I'm going to 